And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is Tuesday, August the 16th. Hard to believe we're just now, I can say, halfway through uh, the month of August as we thought yesterday was. But uh, amazing how, how time flies and just continues to to click on. And of course, another episode, another great day here inside the Backstage Pass uh, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com and Hank Jr. Productions. And also the countdown to high school football, the kickoff next week, August 26th. Uh, the Vider Pirates at the Silsby Tigers. You can hear all the action at Cajun Country uh, Radio. Uh, com. Well, I'll tell you what, live here on the YouTube channel and always at the Sports Guys uh, Podcast.com. Already got a great audience tuning in, too, so be sure to leave those comments. As this gentleman put out an album in late April called Faded Memories, and there's nothing faded about it. He's never looking back, he's looking only up. Uh, Texas country artist, we get to talk a little music today. William Beckman uh, joins us on the program. My friend, good to catch up again. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. It's it's been a while, yeah. And so we talked after I guess it was uh, sometime last year. I've lost track of time how that goes, but we <laughs> talked recently, and of course, you guys have been uh, busy with a, a great song out there uh, called Bourbon Whiskey. Well, I tell you what, for the people that uh, know you and know you as an artist, I mean, just true down to your core. I was talking to a, a group of people today and just said, man, this this guy's definitely one of the best writers in the business, one of the best singer and songwriters out there. Uh, tell everybody kind of how you got started for the people that don't know out there. Uh, definitely the Texas country is in your sound, my friend. And and you guys really kind of started, uh, at least for me, outskirts of town. And y'all haven't looked back, man. This has been a good ride for you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been a crazy one uh, for sure. We're we're excited to uh, to be back out on the road playing for people because um, we all had to take some time off. But no, uh, I got started in the business kind of at an early age. I I grew up in Del Rio, Texas, and uh, one of my longtime mentors is Radney Foster, who's mm -hmm. a, a fellow Del Rioan. And he's the one that really got me into writing songs when I was about maybe 16. I was in high school and I was, I was, uh, I was always the kid that had the guitar and I'd, I'd play for all my friends and I'd just play a bunch of cover songs, George Strait, uh, anything that really came to mind, I'd, I'd learn it and I'd, I'd play it for my friends. But Radney was really the one that got me into, you know, writing songs and, and mm -hmm. say, Hey, it's great that you're playing all these cover songs, but if you really want to do this, you need to start coming up with your own tunes. And so that's how that kind of ha happened. And, uh, and like you said, I haven't really been looking back ever since. <laughs> no, you haven't. It definitely, uh, that first album you guys put out, I mean, it caught me by storm with the seven songs, uh, outskirts of town, give, give kind of the audience that, that preview, uh, what you remember best about stepping in the studio, putting out that first selection of songs. And, and, and I'll tell you, man, it really got, things going for me with uh i want to see you tonight which is one of the ones we yeah. spent a lot here uh, i want to see you tonight was the, the single off of that record radney actually produced the last song off of that uh ep and that, that song's uh called leaving town but yeah i was i was still i'd never been into a studio before so that record for me was a lot of experimenting with different songs and different sounds and trying to figure out where my voice kind of fit the best so it, it, it's definitely kind of, in my eyes, somewhat of a guinea pig of a record because I had all these songs that I'd that I'd been writing over the over the years, you know, mm -hmm. all throughout high school and then well into my college years. And and when it came time to pick a few that I thought were were worth recording, I just kind of found some in different almost subgenres of country music and tried to figure out. That's why I, I want to see you tonight was heavily influenced from like the early nineties country, mm -hmm. um, a lot of like Clay Walker, Radney, um, mm -hmm. a lot of those, uh, really cool snare drum sounds. Um, yeah. what, what you think of when you think of prime nineties country, uh, but leave in town is an, another a song off of that record that was much more of a singer songwriter, um, of a tune. So yeah, I learned a lot from making that record and, and it helped me make, uh, the second one, because mm -hmm. uh, I had a little bit more of a of an idea of what I wanted to do before we went in there. So it's awesome, man. I love recording. I love going in the studio and you're constantly learning from other people. I, I, I recently played guitar. Speaking of Radney, I, I recently played guitar on all the, the Randy Rogers band uh, tracks off of their new album that's about to come out. So that was really cool to experience mm -hmm. uh, the studio from from a different perspective. It's not my record. They're not my songs. I was just kind of a fly on the wall playing the guitar and trying to mm -hmm. keep time. Um, 
but yeah, that's really Radney and, and Randy were two guys that I, I look up to and uh, they continue continuously help me out with my career and, and, uh, and my, my, my songs in my life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, two great guys to look up to. No doubt both we've had here on the program and talked to you about songwriting and of course the music industry. And definitely it's, it's definitely uh, a game you play, but definitely a good one, man. When you're good at something, uh, like I said, de definitely it's going to keep on going and, and definitely people will get behind you. And, and you, like I said, you've done that with a great selection of songs. I'm going to stay with that record too, because uh, there were several more that caught my attention off of that, uh, particular uh, record outskirts of town uh one was midnight moon kind of give me the story behind that one a little bit that one's that one's one that we were uh definitely experimenting on i <laughs> i had this uh i had this guitar that i i would always play when i was a, a sophomore in, in college and i would tune it down to a, a what they call dad gad which is a diff a completely different tuning mm -hmm. and i came up with that guitar lick um but that story I wrote it, it. It's a kind of a funny story actually, because I uh, I was living with with a, a friend of mine at the time, and he he was a big Dave Matthews Band mm -hmm. fan, and I didn't really I, I knew Dave Matthews, but I didn't I wasn't as hardcore of a fan as he was, and apparently uh, Dave Matthews has his own wine, his own he's really into wine, and he makes his own wine, and so my roommate had a bottle of wine that he that he had shared with his girlfriend and he put the empty bottle of wine on the, the shelf mm -hmm. on the bookshelf at our apartment. <laughs> and whenever I'd be home alone, I, I always like, I find myself singing right up to something like a wall mm -hmm. or anything where you can, the sound like of your voice bounces back and you can hear it really clear. And I, I remember I was just, uh, singing to this bottle of wine like this close to my face and the name of uh, the name of dave matthews wine is called the dreaming tree mm -hmm. and so it, it's that's how that song starts off is the dreaming tree was asking me if i missed california because it said the dreaming tree california and then whatever year it was and so that's how it started off and it's just kind of this conversation between me and and this uh not really a bottle of wine but just this person who who I've been longing for. And it was, it was a really interesting song and it came about and I wrote it maybe in 10 or 15 minutes and I, I didn't really think anything of it. And then when I, the more I listened to it, the more it grew on me. And I, I mm -hmm. think the groove is just really, really cool. Uh, but that's how that song came to be. It's funny songwriting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can imagine too. I love it. Uh, you guys keep the comments coming here. Pearl, appreciate you uh, tuning in. Definitely. Yeah. It's one of my favorites there. And uh, Justin, he keeps coming back with, okay, there you go. I love that Dr. too. Doctor, doctor. Doctor, I love that too. I don't know what that cool. means, but we'll, we'll take <laughs> we'll, it. <laughs> we'll take it as a comment. And I love this one too with uh, William coming in here too. Uh, yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, it's superb talents and, and honestly, yeah, he, he reminds me of the artist. I'm, I'm going to tell you about this story a little bit later, too. But uh, there's a guy on America's Got Talent having a hell of a run right now, too. You remind me a little bit of, too, at the same time. But he is, is songwriting. That my boy, is that my boy, Drake? Who there you, you go. About? See, Drake, Drake Milligan. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy, Drake Milligan. Him and yeah, I are good buddies. He's killing go. it, dude. He's, he is, brother. I, I didn't and you know what? We were. I, I was with him. I was with him in Nashville right before uh -huh. he went and did that. And he didn't mention. I guess you're not supposed to. He didn't mention a thing about it. And all of a sudden he's all over TV. And I like called him. I said, dude, you didn't tell me you were going to lot. Like he, <laughs> well, we, like he was going to Los Angeles that yeah. weekend or something. Mm -hmm. And he didn't tell me what for. I thought it was just for business or something. And um, he's crushing it, man. He's crushing it. Very dear friend of mine, him and I actually would love to tour together. We talked about that. So, well, so let the fans I know that uh, we might be <laughs> hitting the road go. together. We'll have to get back in touch with him and say, yeah, we did a show back in March and I had no idea he was going to do that program. And of course I kept it uh, under hush hush. And then of course, after the fact you get, uh, like I said, lit like that, you keep going, man, smoking yeah. out there. Uh, just congratulations to him and yourself. Superb talents. Hey, let's talk about songwriting for I dive into some more songs, including off that record. And of course, off the, sure. uh, the other album we're going to talk about here too, as well, uh, which you guys came out with faded memories back in April. Uh, I loved so much of outskirts of town, but another one that hit my attention real hard, man, was um, I think I'm in love. And I know we've all yeah. used that phrase a lot. That got a great response off that record for you guys too, right? Yeah, it's still one that we play, and it's just a sweet little love song. Um, Radney Foster loves that song. But, you know, a lot of those early songs that I wrote, I, I almost intentionally wrote them really, really simply so that even a kid could understand what I'm saying. I had a single that came out after after Outskirts of Town, and that song is called Someday. Mm -hmm. And I, I took the same sort of approach to that. And uh, 
you know, part of my job as a songwriter is to try to make a song as universal as possible. And, and uh, with Someday specifically, I, it was a song of hope. And it was I wrote it right at the beginning of 2020 when when things were very uncertain and the TV was just always super negative and stuff. And and I wanted I wanted a, a little kid to be able to listen to the song and to be able to take something away from it. And I kind of think of, uh, the same applies for that for that song. I think I'm in love. It's just supposed to be a, a, a straightforward love song, and and um, you, you don't have to pick it apart too hard. But it's a song that I wrote when I was really young. I think I might have been 18. I'm 27 now, so coming up on 10 years maybe. That it's uh it's been it's been a, a song, um, but but yeah, thank you for saying that. It's a, it's it's not one that we play every night, but we need to start playing it more. <laughs> well, if you do, no doubt crowd response comes out and the more people drink, the more they have a good time and the more they That's go. That's right. The and, the we, and the better we, and the better we sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Evan, I, I still got to go to one of your shows. I'm going to get out there and attend one of your shows, no doubt, and do some live coverage Come on. Uh, from one of your concerts. No doubt. I always tell people don't threaten me with a good time. Watch out now. Be good there. <laughs> hey, let's have you, let's have you play one for us here on the show for us. And yeah. we always say uh dealer's choice, but, uh, so many great songs we've talked about, and then some we're going to talk about um, off this latest record, Faded Memories, out there across all the uh, digital platforms. Well, I tell you what, Dealer's Choice, uh, I know my favorite, but uh, you, you got you got plenty of favorites out there. So uh, what are we going to hear first? Let's see. I, I took my ear pods out because I think uh, it's, the guitar sounds better with them. Actually. Okay. You know still? I sure can. Okay, yeah. cool. You'd mentioned bourbon whiskey. We might start yeah. off with a little bit of that. <laughs> it's just one of those feel-good country songs, no doubt. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Well, you said it's over. Our love is dead and gone. I don't know where it went wrong. Honey, I won't complain If you decide to leave So go on, walk out that door And don't worry about me I will be Drinking bourbon whiskey All night long with my friends to keep me company. And darling, you won't be on my mind at all. Because I'll be busy drinking bourbon whiskey. Pack your belongings and go back to Cleveland. Forget about me and enjoy your freedom. Just don't call me to say you're sorry and you miss me. Because I won't listen, I'll be drunk off bourbon whiskey. I will be drinking bourbon whiskey all night long with my friends to keep me company. And darling, you won't be on my mind at all Because I'll be busy drinking bourbon whiskey I'll be busy Drink in bourbon whiskey. Yeah, 
Yeah, they call it real country. That is real country, no doubt, right there. I mean, that's what I was going for when I wrote it. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, people when we yeah. play live, I said, this is the most country song we got. So if you like country, now's your chance to dance. When you guys came up with the concept, were you thinking a little bit of, and we were talking before the show, before we went live, were you thinking a little bit of that 50s, 60s kind of feel with some of the choruses and some of the things you guys did with, uh, with the song to the arrangement because you've got that Roy Orbison kind of feel to it. And like you said, about as, about as good as country can get, right? Thank you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, when I, I wrote that song, um, probably when I was, a, I suppose a, a sophomore in, in, uh, no, I guess I was a junior in college. I, I just moved to Nashville. I transferred over to Belmont university where I eventually graduated from. And I wrote that song because at the time I was a, a big vinyl junkie. I, I collected a bunch of vinyl records and I'd go to all these different thrift uh, shops in, in Nashville and uh, some used record stores and stuff. And and I'd buy just any, you know, I'd, I'd go in there with fifty dollars and just walk out with whatever I could, whatever I could, uh, you know, get with those fifty bucks. And I'd probably do that once a week or once every other week. And he would come across things that you knew um, whether it was country or rock and roll, like, you know, the, like the Pink Floyd, uh, uh, the wall, you know, that's a mm -hmm. classic record. So like, I, I remember I bought that and I, I bought all the classic records that I could, a lot of the Beatles stuff I bought. Um, but then there was a lot of country, a lot of the, a lot of the used record shops had a lot of these old country records. Some of them uh, people I'd never heard of at the time. Um, and so I collected and, and they were cheap, too. I mean, they were mm -hmm. great condition. You could get these vinyl records for as cheap as two or three dollars. I think they were just trying to get rid of them. And it's just, you know, <laughs> two bucks. We'll call yeah. it even. And I said I would buy like 20 of these albums, country, cla the classic mm -hmm. country. I'm talking 50s, 60s, well into the 70s. Um, little Jimmy Dickens, Hank Snow, of course, a lot of Hank Sr., Hank mm -hmm. Jr., um, George Jones, um, all these great traditional country records. And I, I, I listened to a lot of it. So I went through this very big traditional country phase when I'd first moved to Nashville and bourbon whiskey was born from me listening to a bunch of that stuff and wanting to write a song that was again, very simple, straightforward. If you listen to a lot of that classic country stuff, it's not very, uh, uh most of it's not too poetic. It's just really mm -hmm. straightforward. Tells you a very, simple story and uh and, and and it's very relatable and a lot of those country records were guy gets drunk because his woman walked out on him i was like man that never gets old that still happens today so i wrote a i wrote a drinking song and a heartbreak song into one and i combined those two ideas and, and bourbon whiskey was what came out of it um whiskey songs are always i got a lot of whiskey songs it's it's a good uh it's a good subject matter <laughs> to write about you know <laughs> I love that too, no doubt. And it definitely leads off that record, uh, Faded Memories, which is across all the uh, digital platforms. Make sure you guys go uh, check it out if you have not already. And if you have, keep uh, streaming out there. Keep those numbers up because uh, it's music like that that will stay around for, for years and years uh, to come. Thank you. We're going to take you. I, no doubt about it, it certainly will with me. At least on my show, it's going to stay here with William Beckman here on the backstage pass, no doubt, for many years to come. Uh, we're going to take a quick time out here, of course, uh, pay some bills here on the broadcast, and, of course, definitely come back and talk more about that record, Faded Memories. We'll talk about 30 Miles and Danced All Night Long, a couple of my other yeah, favorites cool. off that record. He'll play one more. We'll get into Rapid Fire, and maybe, just maybe, you know, some of the uh, football season around the corner. I'll get William Beckman's favorite football teams here on the backstage pass. Again, live on the YouTube channel and at the Sports Guys uh, podcast. Guys.com. We're now on TikTok. Go check us out. Backstage Pass SG for sports guys out there too. A quick timeout. More with William Beckman. It is the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And every day we're doing that four o'clock here on the backstage pass tomorrow. Nashville recording artist, another great talent, Ryan Griffin is going to join us here on the show. Then on Friday, a good friend of the show is Canadian country artist, a Sycamore coming up and here in a couple of weeks, a special treat for you guys on the show out there for classic country uh, singers, the great uh, Chris Cagle on the program. Uh, followed by Andy Griggs coming up here last week of August. So, William, yeah, I guess we're full here on the uh, backstage pass. Uh, You're staying line- busy. You're staying busy. Good lineup <laughs> to have right there, too. Yeah, when it comes to uh, a great reservation to have here on the show. Uh, back here with Texas artist uh, William Beckman here. It is uh, Faded Memories, the album currently out there across all the digital platforms. Hey, let's talk about the arrangement for another uh, a couple of tunes off that record that definitely were your favorite, yeah. uh, Dance All Night Long. Uh, let's do that one first and then 30 Miles because a lot of people in the comment box have said, that's two of their favorites off that record too. Awesome. Yeah. Danced all night long. Um, it's the only waltz on the record. It's a fun one to play. Uh, when we recorded it, I wanted it. We did it in, in, in a studio in Nashville and, um, you know, it was missing. Uh, and I knew it was probably going to happen, but we kind of finished it and it was missing the, the sound of a, of a mariachi band, the, the, the trumpets and the violins and stuff. And, and so we went back in and we overdubbed all those parts uh, uh, so that it could sound like, like you were in a bar in Mexico, mm-hmm. uh, because that's what the story is about is a guy walking into a, a, a bar and falling in love with a girl and, and uh, dancing the night away. And so it's cool. It's just that one of those Tex-Mex songs that it's a kind of a crossover Latin thing. There's the, the last chorus is in Spanish. Uh, the crowd really, really seems to love it when we play that uh, when we play that song live. And, it, and it's one of my favorites off the record for sure. No doubt. Love it, too. And then, of course, a lot of people loved uh, 30 Miles. And that's one of the ones that Nicole sang, Love 30 Miles. And, of course, uh, All My Exes Make Me Breakfast. So, yeah, <laughs> love the title. that song's not out. That one's not <laughs> out yet. <laughs> not out yet. Whoa, i tell you what, hey, a little preview there. Uh, let's talk about 30 Miles and the arrangement of that one, too, because I thought it was, uh, again, one of my favorites off the record. Yeah, I, I tracked I recorded that song in Springfield, Missouri, of all places. And we did that right smack dab in the middle of COVID. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, my producer, Oren Thornton, and I knew that we weren't going to be able to get a band. I was actually, I, I want to say that was the first song that we tracked. And, and like I said, we couldn't, we couldn't get a band together. Everything was still shut down. So I, I drove over to Springfield and met up with him. It was just him and I in the studio. And we played everything on that, on that track. Uh, the same, I, 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 if I recall correctly, we did that song and the, and the Bruce Springsteen cover in the same day and the bruce springsteen is just mm-hmm. him and i too not a lot of people know that but that when you listen to that cover of i'm on fire that we did yeah. it was it's just him and i playing everything he played the drums and the bass and i played all the guitars and then at the very end there's a dueling guitar solo and that's me and him playing guitar so we just had to layer things until it sounded like a full band because we weren't able to get up a, a bunch of guys into the room uh but 30 miles is is basically about these two young kids um, who fall in love with each other, but they live a town away from each other. And, and there's a, a specific town that I, that I was thinking of when I wrote that song, it's Brackettville, Texas, which is exactly 30 miles away from Del Rio, where I grew up. And every time I come back to visit my folks, uh, when, once you get to Brackettville, there's a sign that says Del Rio, 30 miles. And I just always, uh, once you see that sign, you're like, oh, it's just that last home stretch <laughs> before you get there. And I swear those 30 miles seem like the longest drive because you're just so anxious to get there. Mm-hmm. And it kind of got me thinking about that, um, making that drive and, and, and how when you're anxious, when you really want to get there, you, it, it kind of it, it feels twice as long. Mm-hmm. And so it, it tells the story of uh, these two young kids that kind of fall in love, uh, these two high school kids that fall in love and and uh, they got to go drive 30 miles to see each other. Um, but yeah, to me that that song is very reminiscent of like early James Taylor, very singer songwritery, uh, melodic 
stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going for, at least whenever I wrote it and, and whenever we tracked it. So I hope uh, I'm glad to, to know that there's people out there that really like that song. I love it, man. Like I said, playlist every day. You got to play it at least four or five times, like I said, in the truck when you're driving around, too. And I tell you what, JC kind of read my mind for the next question. That's pretty good, too. I never had a listener really uh, do that, too. But I'm going to go there because, uh, yeah, everything off Faded Memories is fantastic. But she liked it in the dark. In the dark, yeah. Um, God, what can I say about that one? That one's probably <laughs> the, the most special one to me. I wrote that song in del rio when i was visiting my my folks uh, i try to see my family as often as i can because i'm always out traveling on the road or up in nashville writing songs but I, I i came up with the the uh the guitar part for that song which i can i can try to see if i can but it's it it's a very interesting guitar lick that goes like this And uh, I came up with that first, and um, mm-hmm. I knew that it, uh, instantly that it was really, really cool. And I, I pulled out. I remember pulling out my phone and hitting the vo- the, the voice memo, um, getting the voice memo app, and and playing that. Mm-hmm. And I just started just singing, just randomly saying things, and um, and it kind of. I I wrote this chorus to it and I was just kind of freestyling, if you will. And then um, I I put the phone down. I thought, man, that was really, really cool. And then the day after or maybe two days later, I pulled it back up and I listened to it and I, I I didn't see anything wrong with, with the, with the lyrics or with the story. I thought it was uh, almost perfect. I think 90% of it was done. And then I kind of went back and, I think I added a bridge and Mm -hmm. um, I I cleaned up a couple, couple lines here and there, but it was really kind of one of those miraculous songs that came out of nowhere. And, and I was, uh, I remember pulling it up, like saying, Oh man, that's, I bet this is a big, a bunch of garbage, you know, cause sometimes you're like, Oh, this was great. And then you listen back, you're like, no, it's not. (laughs) And sometimes you're like, you don't think too much of it. And then you listen back, you're like, wow, this is beautiful. You know, mm-hmm. and it almost it, it's one of those songs that doesn't feel like I wrote it. You know, it, it mm-hmm. I don't I, I remember writing it, but I don't really remember where my head was mm-hmm. or where it really came from or who I was thinking of when I wrote it. I I, I was probably thinking of a couple of different people. But but um, yeah, that one that one seems to really connect with people, which I'm which I'm really excited about because fans have been singing it at the shows and uh and that's that's a whole nother thing i'm getting used to is people singing the songs back to me but um i remember when i first played that song i i would i played it for this was actually kind of a a gutsy move uh but we were doing this songwriters retreat Mm -hmm. in late 2019 maybe early 2020 and it was right outside of austin texas and there was a whole bunch of us there it was uh randy rogers was there Parker McCollum, Jack Ingram, John Randall, bunch of heavy hitters, you mm-hmm. know, big, big, big songwriters. Um, and we spent three days writing songs. And I had just written this song maybe a couple of weeks prior. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the of the three of the three day uh, songwriter retreat, uh, they had a little stage and everything. And, and they brought in a, a, a very small audience, maybe a, an audience of about 75 people or so. And we all got up on stage and took turns singing songs. And I said, hey, this is a new song that uh, that I wrote. And, and I was on stage with Randy. Um, and I said, this is a new song of mine. It's called In the Dark. And I jokingly said, it's not Kiss Me in the Dark. It's just called In the Dark. <laughs> and uh, they thought they thought it was funny. But I played that song. And Jack Ingram, after that, he pulled me aside. And, and he said, dude, play that song again for me. The one you just played. And I sat there on the back porch of this house that we were all staying in and I played it for him. And then Randy and Parker were there and they also played again. I mean, he made me play it maybe three or four times. Wow. He said, and Jack, to this day, every time I see Jack, he's like, play me that song. And that, that's his favorite song, man. I, I, I think Parker's told me that that's his favorite song of mine too. But, but yeah, it really moved people that night. And that's when I really knew that I was like, okay, maybe this song's. So maybe that maybe I got something here. I definitely need to cut this and put it on the ne- on the next record. So, in the dark is a really special one to me. I, I, a lot of my friends love that song too. 
when you get those kind of heavy hitters do <laughs> having you yeah. play it over and over again. I'm like, I'm sitting yeah. in the corner, I'm like, no <laughs> pressure, no pressure at all. I love yeah, that's a good problem to have, no doubt. I'll tell you what else is a good problem to have too. Victoria, we get to your comment. William, I know you got a question here just a little bit. We get into rapid fire. Hey, let's have you play one more off the record. Uh faded memories. I've got again, they're all my favorites on there. We can do that say. one. We can do in the dark yeah. if it's let's do in the dark. To, Why not? We can let's, do any of them. Let's do it. I tell you what, let's let's do in the dark. Let's go with that too. Right. Definitely. We'll uh get to some of the comments. Victoria, love, yeah, love follow. It's good too. And then of course, William, I'll get to your question uh, here just a little bit too. Brother, it's all yours. All right, let me uh, make sure this thing's all tuned up, folks. It's going to be a lot better once it is. Um. There we go. All right, in the dark. Here we go. Oh, baby, how'd you disappear? Did you go looking for freedom? Some town far away from here. Cause I can see you in the distance of a faded memory. I should have known you had your fingers crossed every time you said that you loved me. Now I can't find a single answer Cause you left me in the dark How am I supposed to carry onward? What am I supposed to tell my heart? This whiskey in the bottle But it won't be there for long If I keep asking all these questions Wondering if I did something wrong now I'm locked up in our bedroom Like a prisoner in a cell Spend too much time thinking about you and Too many nights going through hell Now I can't find a single answer Cause you left me in the dark How am I supposed to carry onward? I'm supposed to tell my heart Cause I still love you Oh, what a foolish thing to say Cause I'm sure I have not crossed your mind In at least a hundred days Oh, but I just want you To light my world up once again I can't accept the fact that you and I have reached the end. And I wish I would have known you were going to leave me feeling blue. Makes me wonder why I ever wasted all my time loving you. Now I can't find a single answer. Cause you left me in the dark How am I supposed to carry onward? What am I supposed to tell my heart now? Where'd you go, baby? How'd you disappear? Did you go looking for freedom now? In some town far away from here. Well, it's like storytelling. It reminds me so much of what Rodney Foster and the impact he made on country music back in the 80s and early Thank 90s. You, I tell you, man, just, uh, dude, you're authentic to the core. I'm telling you, I love everything you've put out from the first album to all the songs we've talked about today. Uh, definitely. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm going to get to some of these comments. I'll let them take over the, the host, co-host duties of the show. Your Victoria first one. Uh, yeah, we didn't talk about it, but I, I, I cannot Follow. wait to see you play live. Follow. Uh, and I love this one from William. 
uh, hey, okay. The Sound of a Breaking Heart. Sound of a Breaking Heart. Yeah, that's another song that uh, that I've had kicking around for a while. Um, but yeah, it's another traditional country song. I, I think we'll get around to it eventually. Uh, <laughs> I got so many songs. There's it's not enough time <laughs> in the day to, to record Miss, them all. But yeah, it's that Sound of a Breaking Heart is a good one too. I like that. Miss uh, Valdez tuning in. Adelira, that's a pretty name if I said that correctly. I hope I didn't badger that too much. So we talked about dance all night long. Uh, yes. Becky? Yeah, look at this one here. I love this one. Yep, yeah, and appeal to all age groups. I, you, you can, yeah, you're right about that. Uh, it's that's pretty cool. I, I, I love the crowd interaction. If it's anything like we've done today, you can only imagine too. And uh, definitely love yeah, this we, one too. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I. Uh, it's funny because uh, Becky was saying about the different age groups. It's really really neat to go to see the people that show up to my my shows. And there's there's everything from really young. Uh, you know, teenagers with X's on their hands and, and, and their grandparents are coming to the shows too. And, it, and it's really a, a good feeling knowing that, um, that uh, my audience is, is able to be so, so wide, you know, the demographic there is, is really broad and, and that makes us feel really good as a band, as a group, because we don't want to be just one going down one lane. I mean, we want everybody to enjoy the music and, and that's why, uh, that's why I do what I do just to, to move people and um, no matter where you're from or how old you are. I mean, it, it, the whole point is just to, uh, to come together and enjoy, enjoy good music. And, and so uh, we, we really encourage you to come out to a show or come uh, listen to a record or something. Uh, it means the world to us. Well, I'm getting out there. When you get back to the Houston area, pretty close. So I'm going to make my arrangements and uh, come over there and see you. Of course, I spent a lot of time up in uh, New Braunfels and San Antonio. I know you've done awesome. some things. Whitewater Amphitheater before, so awfully just a great to, to have you out there on the Texas circuit, man, doing what you're doing here. I love this comment from Aubin. If I'm saying that correctly, Miss Bauman said, uh, hey, you have plans for recording your next album yet? It's already recorded. Oh, look at that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's all we're already done. <laughs> you're already done. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. I mean, Love it. Faded, Faded Memories just came out. And we've already uh, we've already gone back into the studio and cut. I think we've got six songs in the can, and we're, we're going back, and we're going to wrap it up. But, yeah, for the most part, uh, the first singles are already about mixed and, and mastered and everything. And, and uh it's a song that if anybody's gone to the to the live shows, they they might already, already know this song. It's called mm -hmm. "Damn This Heart of Mine." Great song, very rock and roll. It's very up tempo. This whole record's going to be it's a breakup record, but it's really up tempo and fast, and it's almost got some southern rock to it. So it's going to mm -hmm. be really cool. A little bit different than the last one, but but the crowd seem to love it. The the, the unreleased songs that we've been playing, uh, so we can't wait to get it out there. Can't wait to have it again, too. And then also get you back here on the program to play and talk about new music, which is what we do here on the uh, Backstage Pass, no doubt about it. All right, let's get into a little rapid fire because I know we're a grand slam of music and sports and people that kind of follow us out there. With football season starting, you can see my hat where my loyalty lies when it comes to the NFL season. Uh, for you, is it Texans, Cowboys, or is it somebody else you pick? Dude, Cowboys. For? Cowboys all, all the right. way. I mean, it, it, they're not <laughs> – I love it. There you go. But you know what, man? Randy Rogers, <laughs> it, Randy Rogers is the biggest Dallas Cowboys fan. And every time there's a game, he, he does a barbecue uh, at his house in New Braunfels and he invites us all. And we go and have a couple <laughs> beers and, and win or lose, baby, to, uh, to the grave, Dallas Cowboys. I love it. Well, there you go. Like I said, I'm looking for a big year there because what is it now? <laughs> third year, Mike McCarthy. A hot seat, right. I guess, if you want to sit in one as a head coach. So I'm kind of right there with you. Dak, Zeke, they got to put it all together defensively with, with uh, Dan Quinn. So I'm looking forward to – and my, my wife's a Cowboy fan. Not that I don't watch him on Sunday. Just my Arizona Cardinal in my household. But I can't wait to see what, what Dallas' uh, season will play out to this year. Uh, baseball, is it Astros for you? Yes. Okay, all yes, the way. Yes, Houston Astros, yeah. Uh, we went to a game very recently, and uh, we got really great tickets. My family my, – my folks and I – um, and that's something I don't think I'd ever done. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. think I'd ever been to a baseball game. Uh, but, yes, Astros all the way. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, maybe all the way here in 2022 with the way this roster is playing right now, 75 <laughs> and 42. My God, people are all butthurt over the loss last night with the White Sox. I'm like, guys, there's three more games in the series. Hey, tonight, if you get a chance to watch it, it's going to be one of the best pitching matchups out there. Dylan Cease for the White Sox, Justin Verlander, enough said for the Astros there. Wow. What he's done this entire year. So this is going to be a good game tonight in Chicago. And then, of course, they got the weekend series uh, coming up this weekend, too. So definitely a lot of fun. All right, let me ask you this. 90s country art artist that you had would have a dream duet with who, who would that fit for William Beckman 
Let me think about this. 90s country artist. Well, it's not Radney because I know Radney very personally, <laughs> and that could very easily happen very soon that him and yeah. I get to do that. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Clint Black. I, I like that. I like that would be a fits. really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know who else? I'm a huge. I've, I've opened up for him one time. John Michael Montgomery. Oh yeah, is like the king of love ballads like he, he's got so many great <laughs> wedding songs what i call it because like if yeah. you write a great love song mm -hmm. they're going to be popular forever because so many people are going to get married to that song and have that be their <laughs> first true. dance uh, uh, is there anybody is there anybody uh watching this that's got their first dance a john michael montgomery song probably chances probably. are high yep. uh, i would love to work with john michael <laughs> montgomery i've uh, uh yeah i'm a very big fan I love that. All right. Dream destination vacation. If you could go anywhere, where would you go? Probably. This is, I'm sorry. This is not very rapid. You're, I, <laughs> I take a little bit of time. It does take uh, a little thought sometimes. Maybe Greece. I, right. I've, I've, I've traveled in Europe quite a bit, um, but I've never been to Greece. I would love to go there. Um, I like that. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of places I haven't seen, so it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't stop there. I was talking to some family a few days ago and I said, you know, we got to do Florence and we got to do Rome. We got to do Europe. And Italy's one of the first stops. It just has to be. I've been to Italy three times, twice or three times. Love it. Worth it. Too. Beautiful. I got to do that. No doubt. All right. Speaking of food, I'm going to go here. What's the William Beckman favorite cuisine and favorite drink? It could be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Okay. Favorite, uh, favorite food. I grew up on the border. My family's Hispanic, so my, I'm very picky with my Mexican food. When I'm back in Nashville, I, I avoid Mexican places um, just because I'm, I'm wasting money at that point. Um, that's not true. There's a couple good spots. Um, but I love enchiladas. Mm -hmm. That's like my go-to thing. Um, that's probably my favorite uh, Mexican dish for sure. Uh, favorite beverage. I do, you know, I like sweet tea and I like unsweet tea, but the best for me is half and half where it's not too sweet, but it's not, uh, it's not completely unsweet. I mean, I'll get that. I get that. You ask my band when we go to Bucky's, when we uh -huh. stop at a Bucky's, I'll get the big, big thing like that, fill it up with ice. And I just, I, I'm the guy sitting at the, I'll do like a little bit of sweet tea, a little bit of unsweet tea, and a little bit of sweet tea, a little bit of unsweet tea. <laughs> you're, you're just right there with me. That's yeah, because you don't you don't fill half of it and then the other half because then you got to mix it. If you do it a little bit at a time, then it mixes itself, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you're right about that too. I say, tea. Tristan, I'm scared to ask this one too because I know that there's only so much you can let the cat out of the bag, but this is a good one here. Um, good, good question. I'm just not sure how much she can reveal off of that too. And then she, she follows up there with, with uh, maybe any drop dates or anything. So um, there are, the, <laughs> there are no covers on this record. Okay. Uh, all my songs, there's one song that's an outside cut. I'll, I'll, I can give this away. There's one song that I did not write that I, that I cut and, uh, Mr. Keith Gaddis wrote the song Ooh. and it is right. an incredible tune. Um, the, the record will probably probably come out um, early next year, but there's going to be two singles that will come out before then. So we'll give uh, the fans a little little taste of the, the record before the whole thing uh, comes out as a whole. So uh, new music is right around the corner, I can guarantee you that. Well, I tell you where you can follow is across all his socials. And, of course, uh, WilliamBeckman.com and Faded Memories is out there across all the digital platforms ready for the new music. And he loves a challenge. We love a challenge here on the show. And he's one of the best and brightest artists in country music out there in Thank Texas and Nashville, one of the best songwriters. Uh, William, always appreciate the time. The love you show, you show for the show here always, man, always coming by, uh, dropping a line for us and get to talk country music and then some. Best of luck going forward, my friend, and always look forward to the next time we get to chat again, you know? Brandon, thank you so much, man. I can't thank you enough for the support and for spending the songs and for taking the time to uh, to sit down and chit chat, man. It really it really makes a difference for us artists. So thank you so much. You got it. You tell Drake Milligan if I don't talk to him, hey, win this whole competition. Like, <laughs> he to needs him. to win. I'm going to call him right now. <laughs> call him there too. I tell you what a great ride it's been for him and on a hot streak. This guy's uh, one of the stars in, in the oh, business yeah. too. Glad you guys Total are great superstar. friends out there. Uh, tomorrow another big time star, uh, Ryan Griffin, coming on the show. He's doing some big things in Nashville. And we're just a couple of weeks away from uh, Chris Cagle, Andy Griggs, a big show coming up in uh, San Antonio, Texas. We're a part of in conjunction with 
full circle moments. We're going to be giving away some tickets at Pedrotti's Ranch in San Antonio, Texas, down there. Chris Cagle and, of course, Andy Griggs. Saturday, September 3rd, I believe doors are at 6. More details on that to come here on the uh, Backstage Pass. Stay tuned to the socials tomorrow. Ryan Griffin, Friday, Sycamore. And, of course, coming up here in a couple of weeks, the great Chris Cagle, also a Baytown, Baytown guy, Baytown, Texas boy. Love to hear that. We'll talk about Laredo and, of course, all the classics there here on the Backstage Pass. Until then, go check out William's Music, williambeckman.com, and go grab Faded Memories across all the digital platforms. We'll see you tomorrow at 4. Kirsty Krause, CJ Garten will be joining me to co-host the show with Ryan Griffin tomorrow on the Backstage Pass. Until then, have a fantastic night. We'll see you soon.